Honourable Borja. Honourable Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> 19 June 2013 will rightly be commemorated as a key point in the dismal story of the dispossession of the land of the black population of South Africa. During the 19th century, British domination was extended throughout the region. In 1871, Britain annexed the diamond fields of the Northern Cape. 1887, it had incorporated Zululand. By, 19, by 1894, it had, it had completed the annexation of the Transkei. Finally, in 1900, during the Anglo-Boer War, the two republics of the Transvaal and the Orange Free State were annexed. What was the intention? It was to set up a union or federation, as they had successfully done with colonies in Canada and Australia. <clears throat> in 1908, they convened a national convention, and in 1910, a union of South Africa was born. Whether or not it was conceived in sin, the new country signaled the birth of South Africa as we know it today. The 1913 Native Land Act was, cul was a culmination of more than a century of dispossession. It left black South Africans with little more than 8% of the surface of the country. In 1936, additional land was allocated to black South Africans, but still, it comprised only 13.7%. Little wonder, therefore, that the 1913 Act remains such an emotional issue. It can be seen as the, organ as the original formulation, formalization rather, of racial segregation in South Africa, long before the, national, the nationalists institutionalized the apartheid in 1948. It was in common recognition of these past injustices of a hundred years ago that all the parties that negotiated our new constitution accepted the need for genuine redress of the land question. In particular, they agreed that there should be a process of restitution according to section 25.7, a person or a community dispossessed of property after 19 June 1913 as a result of racially discriminatory laws or practices is entitled to the extent provided by an act of parliament either to restitution of the property or to equitable redress. Secondly, there would be a process of land reform. It was agreed that land could be expropriated in the public interest, and that the public interest included, quote, the nation's commitment to land reform. The Constitution also requires that expropriation must be just and equitable, reflecting an equitable balance between the public interest and the interest of those affected. For whatever reason, thus far, progress with land reform has been disappointing. The challenge for all South Africans on the centenary of the 1913 Native Land Act is to work together for a land reform process that takes into account and redress the, the bitter history of dispossession. But it must be fair and equitable to all those affected remaining within the letter and spirit of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, while land is, is and remain a highly emotive and fundamental issue in the national discourse, we may not overlook the sad reality that owning land does not equal instant wealth, nor does it turn the new owners into commercial farmers, especially where they have no skills or resources. This was true when early white settlers were given land to produce food for passing ships, and many failed dismally and went bankrupt because they lacked the basic skills and resources to eke out a living while producing at cut rate prices for then almighty Dutch East India Company. It remains true today 
in the case of beneficiaries of land reform and restitution in recent years. Unfortunately, there are too many examples of failed farming enterprises and disillusioned uh, uh, people. In some cases, it can be attributed to lack of resources, skills, and mentoring. In others, inflated expectations of how many people can make a living out of certain areas of land or projects. Yes, there is something seriously wrong with the land restitution and restitution, uh, redistribution and restitution process. Many land reform projects are collapsing. 852 farms are distressed and unproductive. The department has been forced to introduce recapitalization and development program to help failing land reform projects to become viable. There are numerous programs that have been implemented to support emerging farmers. Despite this, farm, despite this farms like in the Western Cape, where the Bowland estate of 56 hectares that was supposed to be to support 60 beneficiaries currently have zero production and is, in, is on the market for sale. Likewise, the Winloa Park Trust in Worcester, 50 beneficiaries are back to square one with farm, living, farm having gone bankrupt. The Honor, Honorable Member, your time is up now. I thank you, sir. Thank you very much.